jujitsu, any burning concepts that you want to explore, that's what this session's about. And today we've got two jujitsu savants, Mr. Eli Knight and Jared 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 Dessa. Dessa. Here we go. <laughs> yeah. To take it away. So, gentlemen, do we have an initial question on deck? Anyone from our <laughs> live platforms? Oh uh, yeah, we got a question from John here. He has a problem with being in bottom side control bottom against side control. Uh, heavier opponents. Heavier opponents, bottom side control. Gentlemen, how do you handle it? Someone's bigger than you, managing side control and gaining the upper uh, position. That's like the most miserable position to probably be in from like a smaller guy perspective. Whenever you're with a bigger guy on top of you, he can make it more oppressive in that position probably than anything else. So um, first of all, I always recommend one, be the bigger person. Be stronger and always be faster than your opponent, right? Um, and then always stay in good positions. So uh, if you fail at any of those or all of those, this is what you should do. Um, first of all, I don't want to allow Jared, if he's bigger and stronger, to be able to get this arm underneath my head. That's how he's going to maximize the pressure. So I'm going to keep this tucked back here like this. So I never allow him here to, to get underneath where he can smash me with his shoulder. Now, he may seal the space here where, by dropping his hip like he just did right now. But um, if he wants to do anything with this arm, he has to pull it away. If he makes space here between our hips, then I'm going to go to replace my guard. And at any time during that process, I'm going to go to replace my guard. But like if he's here, he drops that hip and he doesn't give me that space, well, if he wants to do anything, he still has to get this arm free. So if he pulls this arm back, I'm just gonna chase it and I'm gonna go sit up like this here. Because I have the space to be able to sit up at the waistline. And so I push his arm back behind him, I swivel my legs out from behind him like this, and then I wind up on top. That doesn't matter how big he is, it's, it's gonna work as long as I can get his elbow behind his back. Constructionally, he just can't maintain the position. One thing you wanna pay attention to is if the weights, uh, if the guy's weights on you, uh, or if the weight's on, more on the ground. Usually if you're being smashed because the, guy, the guy's weight is on top of you. If that's the case, sometimes you're rolling over. So if I'm starting to go uh, to get the knee in and he smashes into with this arm, then I can actually roll over this arm and get him to roll over. But it's only going to work if his weights, if his centers come to the edge of his foundation in this direction. So my, by trying to get the, the knee in, shrimp out on this side, uh, will make him drive further. So then once his weight comes over this, I track down with the arm and I can bridge up and through and control him over this way. So it may seem like well, I'm never gonna be able to pull that off against a guy who's really big or, or really athletic, but it's, it's, it's in essence, he's doing it for you by driving his weight to the edge of his foundation. Then all you need is a little nudge to top him over. Yeah, it's the most basic jujitsu principle. It's a little harder to actually apply it sometimes, but it's the most basic thing. It's like, I don't want to use the energy he's given me to advance the position. So I want him to do as much of the work as he'll do for me, right? All right, any other questions? Or we, uh, we got another one here. How can I beat someone bigger than me? It's a, kind of a continuation of the theme that we're on. Mm -hmm. Any effective yeah. techniques being a yeah. very smaller, there's a big disadvantage in terms of size. Yes, um, find a jiu-jitsu class, enroll, <laughs> and train. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, I mean, like tongue in cheek a little bit, but it's, it really is. Like I mentioned this the other day when we were filming some content for this course. And it's that a lot of martial arts do, um, they, they kind of preach, use your opponent's energy against them. You know, you can defeat someone bigger or stronger just by using good technique. Jiu-Jitsu delivers on that better than anything I've ever seen. And we've studied a lot of martial arts over the years, Jared and I, between the two of us, and we still constantly do study other martial arts. But Jiu-Jitsu is something that really shows you how to like notice the structure of the opponent. Notice how they're moving, how they're repositioning themselves, and manipulate that structure. And then structurally speaking, you know, versus muscularly speaking, I don't have to be stronger. I just have to understand how their base works and how to like corrupt that base. You want to pay attention to the weight distribution, and because we have to cooperate with that. Now, if you're dealing with someone who's larger and stronger, and you're trying to fight their weight, then you're running problems, mm -hmm. right? Because they're going to over overpower you. So uh, by paying attention to the way the weight is distributed, distributed and cooperating with that, it allows you to um, overcome someone who's larger and stronger because uh, you don't have to you don't have to fight the weight. Yeah, we got a question from Mike here asking, uh, he's having problems, with, yeah, Mike, yeah. yeah, he's having problems with uh, like back mount and everything, like getting out. Getting out of back mount, okay. Um, again, don't get there, um, but if you did, then um, here's the thing, whenever we're talking about escapes, especially from really bad positions, we have to think, think about things uh, early, middle, late. I'm obviously already very late to get here. Uh, if I got here and I'm this late, then I need to at least like minimize the damage. So what I'm going to do is make sure that Jared can't connect his hands first of all. If he can connect his hands in a seatbelt or anything like this, then I'm going to be in an even worse uh, position. So I want to keep his hands apart. Whenever the hands are reaching across, I want to try to keep uh, him from connecting in any kind of seatbelt or getting underneath wedges or anything like that. 
So um, once we do that, then uh, the next thing I need to think about is I need to get my shoulders and hips to the floor. I'd like to have both his arms on one side rather than one here, one there. So if I can do something like put this to the other side of my head here this way, then I can go on pretty much either way. I can start to drive this direction or I can start to take my head and shoulders to the floor. And now from here, this is an awkward position for Jared. It's very difficult for him to have any kind of submission opportunities. And then I have my shoulders and now I'm going to focus on the leg and scooting out here like this. I want to put this foot here behind his knee so that he can't uh, remount right away because if he does try to like hop up and remount me, this is going to like throw him off balance. I'm going to win the scramble at that point. So again, that's kind of like an, an early late escape, right? But do you have something for later? Uh, let's see. So uh, if they've got the, the grip all the way in, I don't want this, uh, this hand to be able to come over my arm and you can choke me right here. So, uh, so if he's got this, uh, this overhook, I can come up and hug it, right? And this is gonna lead to the same, um, the same thing that, that, that Eli did before, but now that I've hugged close to his arm, I can put my head kind of close to the shoulder, and come down and find the fingers, and use this to pry the grip free. Now I can slide the hand in and come, uh, come under to get that, the arm all the way on the other side of the head, right? Then we're back in the same state. So. Yeah, beautiful. Uh, we've got a question about the effectiveness of jujitsu in the streets. In the streets? Yeah. Um, don't get in street fights, but um, if you do, make sure there's a padded surface so you can do more jujitsu. <laughs> yeah. uh, now, here's the thing um, jujitsu is not just about a ground fighting art, it is uh, primarily focused on modern times about the ground fighting aspect of it because it's extremely efficient there and we have this positional hierarchy that we like to move through. Is it, uh, but um, actually, Jiu Jitsu is a complete martial art. It handles uh, standing, managing the distance, and uh, looking at environmental factors around like everybody else should. You should have positional or you should have situational awareness all the time, uh, as uh, any time that you're out in public anywhere. Now, if you do get into a fight, your ability to like nullify the power uh, like difference between you and the opponent is going to be something that Jiu Jitsu is, uh, is very good at handling because we want to stay out of range of somebody who can strike harder than we can or we want to crash that distance where they don't have uh, good velocity behind their strikes. So to illustrate, it's kind of like this here. If um, Jared is the bad guy, he wants to punch me, the worst place I can be is like right here, right? So I want to mess with this distance. I want to stay outside of that cage and keep outside of that cage. And I'm looking to possibly disengage or avoid the fight altogether. But if he is advancing forward, then I want to be able to crash this range here because now once I get into this clinch position, it's very awkward for Jared now to be able to hit me effectively with much velocity behind it. At this point here, I can look to maybe secure a takedown, maybe make a throw, um, and then if I have to engage to subdue them further, then I have the positional ability to do that on the ground um, or possibly disengage and get out of the situation. To Eli's point about the distance, if he stays in this, this range, then I'd be off. Whenever he makes just a little more space, one of the things that telegraphs that I'm about to strike is my body's movement. And now for me to hit him, I've got to move. And that telegraph is about to happen, it's helps him punch. We've got another question asking about any sneak peeks of what we can expect for this digital seminar. Um, yeah. With the Budo Brothers, obviously. With the Budo Brothers, <laughs> obviously. Yes, yeah. Uh, lots of good stuff. We start, um, man, there's so much content in this thing. It's, it's, it's just kind of absurd. We go from everything foundational, from the very basics of Jiu Jitsu, talking about the positional hierarchy, talking about standing, self defense, um, talking about fighting, uh, mutual combat talking about, um, and, and today what we've been working on is filming like 101 minute techniques. That's something that's just unheard of, and there's gonna be a lot of that leaked, and so you'll see. So, um, man, I, I just like did a whole brain dump as much as I could into a deep dive like this. Um, yeah, there's there's a lot of different techniques on it, but um, that's, that's uh, I want to give it all of it. When's it gonna be released? Oh, good question. Uh, Kyle, Eric, when's it gonna be released? <laughs> February! February, <laughs> February. Ish. yes sir. I had a question about darts chokes and the uh, some of your favorite setups. Darts chokes are my favorite setups. I've got um, a couple of setups I like a whole lot. My favorite setup for the darts choke is for him to give it to me. Um, so if Jared's on his side and side control, right? Um, so this is gonna look like this. This is where Jared is like looking to dig for an underhook on my side over here. If, now what he's trying to accomplish, he's trying to do some kind of uphill escape and get up to his knees and scramble and then maybe take me down or scoot to my back. So whenever I feel that happen from side control, I'm gonna go wing over this direction. So I'm going overhook on his underhook. Now the next thing that I'm gonna look to do, and this is one of the key details for me, is I'm gonna put my neck on his lap right here and I'm gonna shoot this hand far behind, uh, underneath his neck. This hand here is gonna hold his head and shoot through, so I get nice and deep over here. So now, I'm going underneath his arm, underneath his neck, and now next thing, I'm gonna slide this arm down tricep to the back of his head, elbow to the floor, and then there is my darts choke. I'm gonna sprawl, drive my hips into him, and it's gonna be nice and tight. Yeah, sometimes if, uh, 
gas down into it, and that arm gets in front right here. So if I can hold the wrist and just reach through and cup the, um, the neck right here. Now, the key to the choke is cutting off the carotid here and the carotid here. So the shoulder does that on this side, and my hand is on the other. So I need to align my posture. So as I come down, I'm not just giving my weight to them, but I'm bringing my shoulder towards my knuckles. And this way the choke will be tight. Uh, if I feel like he's starting to get away, I might even pull over the head to make this a finish. This is the kind of move that pisses me off so bad about Jared, because like, he, he, he's leaving way too much space. Like if I did that, I'd get a roll, I'd get a skate on, but he just puts things in the right position. It's very frustrating. I hate it. Um, anything else? Yeah. Oh, uh, escape from uh, bottom side control from a judo guy. From a judo guy. So that means like a kiss katami or a, a shooter kiss katami. It's like a scarf holder, or broken scarf holder, right? Um, they yeah, didn't go into detail. I don't because it is a modified kind of scarf holder. But um, it, I'll show one maybe where from Sanders scarf holder, and Jerry can maybe show one from Brooklyn. But if we go here, and so basically this is a headlock. But if he knows how to ride this position, it's going to be absolutely miserable. And this is actually, I got a good detail just recently on this from Jared, so he should probably be showing it, but I'm gonna show it anyway and he can correct it. But we get here in this position, and you'll notice, like, here's a couple things. Like, it, whether I chase Jared or whether I move away from Jared, he's gonna have to adjust his base and reconfigure his weight. So um, if I, like, start to move away and he starts to chase me, then that not only scoots his hips back, but it gives his head and shoulders forward and makes him a little unstable and off balance. So um, this, the bad part about this here is that he's trapping my arm. Uh, otherwise, I can do a lot of different escapes, but with my arm trapped, I'm, I'm kind of limited. So whenever we get in this position, I want to do that, maybe get him to chase me a couple times, and then from there, I'm going to bring my feet in, I'm going to bridge, I'm going to push my shoulder in toward his chest, and be able to roll him over that direction like that. With details, you have to add to that. Well, let's see. So, he's got the scarf on here. So, uh, what I was, you know, I was right. So you want to think about taking the shoulder over the forearm as you do this. So as my head goes to the ground, I'm using my head to trap the wrist. And then I want my bridge to take my center mass right through the shoulder. So I go boom. Yeah. And I don't really even have to use my hands all that much. It's more connecting the center to center. So as I roll, it's like I'm taking one shoulder over the other. And that's going to make it uh, a little bit more effective. We got a question. With combining jujitsu with any other martial art, what would you think is the most effective combination? Um, well, since jujitsu is um, the, the strongest elements of it are the grappling aspects, right? So I, I think that the logical explanation of that would be something that um, has uh, a very comprehensive approach to striking. And so for, for me, uh, one of the best compliments from another martial art, if I had to pick one other, would probably be something along the lines of Muay Thai. The reason I like Muay Thai a lot is because there are a lot of clinch elements. There's a lot of grappling, standing in the clinch, and so those complement a lot of what Jiu-Jitsu has to offer from the standing range. It helps you with different tools of the eight limbs to be able to like navigate the ranges, um, and then you know it gives you some good striking options from different positions as well. You have to be aware that whenever you're uh, studying the, the complement arts like that, that they're they're uh, you know Muay Thai and Jiu-Jitsu are, are both built to be effective in different ranges, right? And so you want the ranges to complement one another, right? And uh, and so you're sure you're not mixing. If you're trying to do jiu-jitsu in Muay Thai range, that's it's not quite as effective. And if you're trying to do Muay Thai jiu-jitsu range, that's not as effective. So, so uh, I look to, to make, make those two complement each other by fitting the ranges. I got a question here. Any tips for LEOs, I'm not sure the acronym, yeah. as, to how, yeah. how, as how to get up effectively after being taken down? Absolutely. Um, this is going to be contingent on the position um, and how you were taken down, so that, that is one thing. But I will say this, um, there, there's a couple considerations whenever I'm doing a technical stand-up. So if Jared um, knocks me down, first we'll say, and so he's standing, I'm still on the ground, um, I, I don't want to just get up any kind of way. If I just stand right back up into Jared here, if I'm going to get hit or get knee, uh, I'm going to push back down. So um, as I'm going to be here, first I want to make sure I can manage to do this. My legs can do a lot of that. I want to uh, target the closest thing to me. So maybe I can kick, stop at this knee here in the front. Um, if he's leaning over at any time, I can go to kick up like this. But I have to be careful about overextending and giving him a free route to pass my target. So whenever we're here like this, I'm kicking like this until I can get to my elbow next. Once I'm to my elbow and then eventually to my hand, I want to have this one up to either block out or to cover. Once I'm doing that now, I can still, again, target. But this is not necessarily about me snapping his knee in half. It's about me creating distance between uh, myself and him to be able to get myself up uh, safely and effectively. 
Um, after that position, now I have to decide as I'm getting up, am I gonna disengage or re-engage? If I'm gonna re-engage, then as I go to stand up, I'm gonna like, make this pyramid structure, but I'm gonna have this one kind of poised to be able to drive me back forward. So this is a strong position if he wants to push me back down, but it's also gonna give me a little bit of a sprint and start this one here to be able to come back and re-engage with him, covering and keeping myself safe. One thing to consider when you're um, um, throwing the kicks and whatnot is how, uh, how much the guy's bombarding you with energy. If he's weighing in, then uh, uh, just just slowly, then the kicks are more effective at keeping back. If he's rushing in, I may need to just just come up and, and block, right, and then lower into my guard or whatnot. Uh, and then we look at it, uh, get up the guard right, there as well. So if, if he's made all the way in my guard right here, I can do two hands on the head and push away. Put the foot on the ground and scoop my hip point until I connect to, to his hip with that bottom leg. From here, I'm going to slide back and find the wrist, pin it to the ground and stand up. Like I was discussing right there. What are your top three favorite submissions? Ooh, um, what do you give to me? Yes. <laughs> okay. so, so you have to have, like, when you're your black belt, you give these standard black belt answers. One is don't get in that position. Two is whatever submission that gives you my favorite. Um, I don't remember that one. So um, to, to like, get our, not to skirt the question, though, one of my favorites is going to be the rear choke. Um, and the rear choke can be, have different colors to it. But uh, personally, I like the bow and arrow choke. That's one of my favorite chokes. Essentially, it works like this. I get on Jared's back somehow, kind of cheapest position. And the thing I like about it is that I'm gonna take away like all of Jared's abilities to be able to defend. So um, if I get here and he's pulling on my hand, I'm gonna trap that with my leg. So now he doesn't have this arm. I'm blocking this arm down here so he can't defend with that. The next thing here, I'm gonna come inside and he can't defend with his chin very easily because um, I'm gonna get underneath like that and that's all he has left to defend with. So now he's cut off both his arms, I have his neck, and then to add uh, extra pressure to it, I can grab down here on the pant leg, push him up and over, and that's a ton of pressure here, arching, cutting his head right I have to say, um, I would consider chokes and strength is probably more, a, more bit, um, a better submission to go for than joint locks. Mm -hmm. uh, because uh, the guy can always get a limb broken and keep fighting. But uh, when, when you choke the guy out, then there's, Nobody yeah, fighting. he just, just passed out. Uh, we had a question uh, about uh, how to get your leg out of lockdown when you're in half guard. Okay. If it's a good lockdown, you don't. <laughs> uh, but uh, I'll show you how to get out easily from a not great lockdown. Um, this is, so if, if he's locking down on my leg, so he's got lockdown position like this, right? The thing about lockdown is like if I just stay here and hang out, he can really stretch, make a lot of pressure on my knee, my calf, my hip, and it relieves my ability to really smash here. So um, something that I can look to do is I'm gonna get upper body control like this, and then um, this, uh, the more he stretches, uh, he gives me access to lift both of his legs and hips like this. You see that? So he's helping me to do that. Now I'm gonna put my other foot underneath. So now I'm heel to heel with him, and now Jared's gonna try to keep the lockdown. <laughs> but it doesn't work. Um, it's kind of like resetting a mouse trap. You have that one little stick that that whenever it's fully like locked in the spring back, you put that one little stick there and then they can't move that. And that's kind of what's happening here. I'm blocking that heel, just removing my heel and getting out of position for him to reestablish it. But again, there's lots of, uh, I see really good lockdown players that will shut that down or score again if you don't like the term lockdown. So these are never uh, alternative. So if you guys got me locked down. Uh, so the more I drive into him and, and forward, the tighter the lockdown gets. So if I can get these double underhooks, and then sit back into my heels, it helps relieve the lockdown pressure right here, okay? So uh, coming, uh, so just moving down south to his hips, now I can bring this hand under the leg mm. and turn my shoulder to the belly, and this other hand come around, I'm gonna go like a, uh, a grip right here on the wrist to pull the forearm right through the leg. Boom, boom. Now I kind of pinch my elbows together, drive my shoulder in and go to extend the legs right here, and it pops right off. Good. From here, I walk around and slide the knee up and start walking my way back away. We've got a question asking about how important flexibility is in jiu-jitsu. Um, how important, that's, a, that's an interesting way to say it. You should always be flexible. You should, you should have good flexibility. Mostly though, um, your, your movement should be based on something that anybody can do with like slight modification, I feel like. If it's a solid technique, then it's gonna be able to work without requiring a big degree of strength, speed, or flexibility. Now, having said that, I would prioritize flexibility um, and flexibility training, uh, mainly for safety, and mainly to be able to like keep your joints like healthy whenever you're practicing and training. 
uh, that would be my primary concern with that. Not building a game structured around being extra flexible. Mm -hmm. yeah. Angelo from New Jersey would like to thank you guys and says this is an awesome live session. Fantastic. Thank you, Angelo. I appreciate it. Yeah. What's up? Yeah. Oh, uh, they had a question about Dale Hilvergard. David Eva? Yeah. Yeah, nice. Dale Hilvergard is um, it's an interesting kind of um, modified guard position. Um, the term was coined, of course, uh, by named after uh, Hikaru Nebediva, who is an outstanding jiu-jitsu practitioner. And basically, it's like this. Um, the, the idea behind it, and this is how I teach it in the progression. If I wind up in this basic kind of hook sweep position like this here, where my foot's in the hip, then mm -hmm. the, the leverage that I have here to be able to sweep Jared is by pushing in his hip, pulling here, and blocking here so he can't step back, and then he falls down. Now, Jared knows that, and he feels that this is a danger, so sometimes he pushes this out. This is where daily Hiva comes in very handy. Now, daily Hiva can happen like this, where I go inside, and I put my foot on the inside. So this is referred to as a daily Hiva hook, and this is a shallow daily Hiva hook. But because now this is primarily a pulling tool, I need a complementary pushing, so my foot switches over here to this. Right? And there's different ways, of different things that we can look at from here. One of my favorite uh, techniques from Daily Heap Guard is I'm going to go here and push this out and try to put Jared's hand on the floor over here like this. And once that hand's on the ground, I'm going to hold here, put my foot on the hip, shoot this leg through, and then bring him back and lock up the triangle choke. That's one of my favorite setups. It's real um, basic, straightforward from using that Daily Heap Hook. One thing you can do is, once I've got that daily heel hook, if I need to grip with the wrist, I can use these connections to pull his weight over me. And if I get his weight on top of me, then I can cross him to the side, right? So, uh, forcing, kind of forcing him to give me his foundation. Beautiful. Gentlemen, this has been awesome. Thank you everyone for tuning in. If you have any suggestions, we are gonna spend the next couple days wrapping up this digital seminar. We're talking hours of content, hundreds of videos. So if there's anything specifically that you would like to learn from these gentlemen, please send us an email, shoot us a text, shoot us a message. We'll be sure to incorporate that in the digital seminar that will be dropping in February. Everyone, thank gentlemen, thank you so much. Thank and you thank you for tuning in. That was awesome. Thank you. See you guys soon.